Welcome back, everyone, to Kazurak. I'm your host, Mr. KMT Lover. But right now, we're still at war with the Feng Chong government. We've taken their initial capital, with, uh, and uh, well, the Japanese have also joined the war against us, which is not good. So we might be replaying this just a little bit here, but we got a couple events. We're doing a couple focuses, and to see if we can actually push them out before the Japanese actually really, uh, well, start naval invading us and destroying us, basically. But the term is new clothes. The outbreak of the war uh, and the growing uncertainty of the future of uh, the, uh, has prodded the nationalist government to act to reassure the population of victory. Patriotic songs have been written, pamphlets printed out, and posters drawn up in a concerted effort to drum up patriotic spirit. Uh, perhaps the most striking is the presence new wardrobe. Wang Jingwei has been sure to be photographed in a military uniform wherever he goes, casting aside his usual civilian attire. According to government press, it is, it is to stand in solidarity with the Kuomintang's brave soldiers in the National Revolutionary Army to stress the total nature of the coming war. Through both visual and written media, they have been sought to portray the chairman as a capable wartime leader and a natural company of the generals. Critical commentators note that Wang has long been at odds with military men, including the late Chiang Kai-shek and his current nemesis, Deng Yanda. According to them, donning a military uniform to emphasize his role as commander-in-chief is nothing than a petty effort to reassert dominance in military matters with the members of the uh, Military Affairs Commission. Perhaps most irksome to critics is his custom rank insignia, ostensibly to note his symbolic position as Grand Marshal of the Army and Navy. Disagreements about vanity sides. The looming war may very well dictate the future of the revolution. There remains to be seen in the nations of capable hands. Clothes make the man. Oh, look at that. He changed his clothes. Huh. Born 1883, huh? Mm. I think we got Deng Wen Yi last time, huh? That's only 4%. It's not very much. We should still use him. Oh, but we got Lin Biao. I forgot to get this guy again. We'll get him in just a little bit. But yeah, overall, we're doing okay. It's not super fantastic, but we're doing all right to say for now. Um, is it great? No, but we're doing the best we can. And the Zong's Chan suit explodes in popularity. When the Republic of China was proclaimed in 1911 with the Xinhai Revolution, the cycle of dress worn, or style of dress worn at the time in China was heavily influenced by the Manchu tradition. Both the Kipao and the Changshan were imposed upon the Han peoples by the Qing's of former social control. An attempt to modernize not just the Chinese nation, but also Chinese society, akin to the Meiji, Meiji restoration efforts on the fact of changing Japanese dress, Chinese intellectuals and elites began to combine elements of both Western and Chinese dress. The Zongshan Su, therefore, is a product of such a cultural revolution. Uh, the tunic was introduced by the founder of the Kuomintang himself, Sun Yat-sen, and features a suit based on Japanese cadet uniform. Four pockets on the suit are said to represent the four virtues of propriety, justice, honesty, and shame, while the five buns on the tunic represent the five branches of the nationalist government. Since popularity since the nationalist government returned to mainland has exploded in popularity. Uh, government officials frequently uh, don the suit as a symbol of proletarian unity and its eastern counterpart to the western business suit. A humble outfit for great change, which I think I read last time too. Hello, what is this? Oh, wait, they're already war with us, aren't they? Sha Fei, the revolution's photographer. Yeah, they're already war with us, so. Born Situ Chuan in Guangzhou, Guangdong province, Chuan enlisted in the National Revolutionary Army in 1926 during the First Northern Expedition as a telegraph operator. After the expedition's failure, though, he fled for Song Qingling's Mingan insurgency, where he developed a hobby for photography in particular. He developed a fascination for realistic photographs, unlike the international models that he would be seen in foreign, or he would see in foreign magazines. He would frequently travel across Fujian, uh, taking photos of poverty-stricken uh, children and families, and would also go to Shanghai to meet and photograph intellectuals such as Lu Jun. With the northern expedition full swing, the, he took the name Sha Fei, meaning flying sand, in order to document the revolution on the front lines. Uh, his photographs capture instances of military actions while upholding the Kuomintang cause as just as righteous, even in their handling of the enemy POWs. Unfortunately, this talented photographer is now currently in a mental hospital. Oh boy. Weeks of uh, photographing the bloodiest aspects of war, mangled limbs, and bru military brutality, and the devastation across China have taken their toll on the young photographer. Uh, while he's currently diagnosed with mental illness and tuberculosis, there's hope yet that he'll eventually recover. Capture the revolution's best moments. Yay! Cool, and we just standardized the Army Organization. The NRA, by order of the National Disbandment Com uh, Commission, which we read last time, is hereby authorized to adopt two forms of division types to standardize the military organization. With the conclusion of both the guerrilla phase of revolution and the Second Northern Expedition, the NRA is now to transition from the People's Army to one that is capable of bringing the National Revolution to Asia. So, uh, chart the military regions, which I read last time as well. If you want to about this, please go right ahead. Cool. Uh, which is very good for us, too. So, and actually, we could... Oh, hello. That is not good right there. Holy cow. We get to Pyongyang. That'd be really great really fast. Oh, and they definitely have a lot of soldiers down there, don't they? If we could quickly get to the capital and take out Fengshan, that would be fantastic. Oh, I didn't realize we are fighting down here. Oh, we're fighting those guys too. Oh, boy. 
the Chen Bujin Bijun incident. Chen Bujin, or as many of the rest we call her, Wang Foren, Madame Wang, is a power unto herself. While Wang dominates the political scene in Nanjing, she established plenty of bases of her own to shore up her husband's position. As a testament to her power. Uh, at one point, she said to have informed a recently appointed mayor that the city is mine. You go there, but do not control anyone. You just represent me to do things. This active lifestyle, however, has forced her to travel frequently, leaving her vulnerable to opponents. Or so they thought. With help of some local and apparently ex warlord commanders, her entourage was ambushed at a parade which she was supposed to attend. Under heavy guard, the kidnapping attempt was quickly foiled. The government began its investigation, and the finger pointing soon followed. Chen has publicly accused the army of orchestrating it, though her opponents have accused her of staging the whole event to gain sympathy and protects to arrest her enemies. So had the clear evidence of wrongdoing. Her allies have done damage to her case with a heavy handed tactics and the immediate aftermath. What is undisputable, however, is how unsafe China is becoming, even along liberated regions under Kuomintang rule. Violence against political figures has been normalized, and not everyone is fortunate enough to have an armed caravan with them everywhere they go. Zhu and Lai suggested pulling back, arguing revenge is best served cold. Uh, Wang, who has been enraged by the incident has, against his beloved wife, has turned to Li Shi Kun for more proactive advice. Li, a former Red Squad guard member, or Red Squad member, and now head of the Wang household security team, has insisted in suggesting a harsher approach to root out subversives. Going house to house, uh, she helps to uh, shake out suspects. Lee's influence within the resistance faction uh, is sure to increase after a successful protection of the First Lady. Arrest anyone involved, even remotely. Shook it off and shepherd her blades. The International Air Volunteer Group. Left alone without allies, many of the party fear the worst when the Japanese declared war on us, perhaps in their desperate attempt to maintain imperialism over China and to divide our country from Manchuria in the air. Our forces are simply no match against the Imperial Japanese Air Force, which fields some of the most modern planes in the world and the most experienced Air Force in Asia, of course. With total air supremacy, the Japanese Air Force has been at work, bombing your cities, killing your people, and uh, <clears throat> destabilizing your military operations due to the control of the air. However, in our need, the Communist of France and the Unibrenna sent us a squadron of volunteers from around the world, led by the French Army's André Jappi, an expert pilot from France. While most of these volunteers are French and British, there are also a considerable amount of Italians and reportedly even some Norwegian pilots, all of whom have arrived in China in secret uh, as tourists. These uh, Volunteers have arrived with the Hawker Fury monoplanes and have come to bolster morale and train prospective pilots so that too can may carry out the fight in the air. Uh, with their help, perhaps it would be feasible for us to regain control of our skies. We fight with our comrades in the great struggle against imperialism. We'll take all the help we can get. Absolutely. How much strength? Oh, they have four divisions. They're wild. That's quite a few. Okay, that's, we're just wasting manpower there, but we got to move fast before we completely fully die. So, yeah. Because as much as I want to just take these guys out here with these guys, we're actually doing okay still in the north here. So, um, do we have any horses around here at all? Cab? Yeah. Get up there. He's been wounded, which is not ideal, but whatever. We're still doing okay against uh, Feng Shan, which is not really a big old problem for us. Oh, there goes Liberia and the Federal Collapse. Nice. Oh, and also, we're doing land reform. We're going to create the United Front. We, the descendants of Yang and Huang, cannot sit idly by as the country is powerless to stop the foreign devils from ravaging our lands. Too long we've been divided, split among alongside provincial and factional lines while the Imperials took a look hungrily at our borders. Ready to explode our nation. No more. Let us put aside our petty squabbles for national unity to defend our honor, the Honorable Zhang Gua, and being tarnished forever. Uh, Ki Lai? Yeah. We get more organization too. For now. End of the American Civil War. Very nice. Good job, guys. And we're going to take you. Xi Zhang Clique? Yeah, that's fine. Sejuan Clique. We'll have to take out to bed later, but that's fine. A champion for workers and peasants? The NRA has had a face ever since Juno Chung's untimely death. It will be Deng Yangdam. The story of Korea has taken him to the halls of Wampol, to the seas of Europe, the hills of Xinji, and now to the battlefields across China. With every success, his prominence rises, creating a powerful nucleus for those seeking an alternative to Wing's rule. But as his prestige soars, sometimes even his closest allies fear he's flying too close to the sun. And of course, as we read earlier, derogatory comments from Red Napoleon have quickly swirled. For now, though, public opinion remains on his side, and so does the army. Is he Bastion Mills Rigori, a socialist hero, or Bonapartist? The nonpartisan Bastion of the NRA. Li uh, Zhishen is a man with a story of career tasked with an arduous job of serving as war minister, a political power broker, and also an acting general in the National Revolutionary Army. His recent victories has worked to promote an image of nonpartisanship and the high command, avoiding the hostile quarrels of Kuomintang political leadership. That said, Li owes his job just as much to politics as his military acumen. Whether working past, the past working with Lin Guang, 
Ling Guang, political factions ranging from Hu Hanmin, Chen Jiaoming, and even the new Guangxi clique. Uh, he has leveraged these connections to cast himself as a mediator, but some wonder if this mask is true loyalties with the right or himself. A reason of reason, a voice of reason, at least in certain times. I feel like I've done this before. The Chinese United Front, which should lead people to victory. That's right. Because right now, if we can capitulate them, that'd be great. Empire of Japan, we've got to move fast and kick them out if at all possible. Yeah, we'll take whatever we can get at this point. Uh, you guys go into here uh, and go down that way. It would be better if you concentrated your forces. If you really want to attack, you do it like that, but you're still not going to be... Hmm? The four elders announce Wang. Well, that's not good. Uh, do you have anything here? No? No? All right. God, I think we're our advance just has to stop now. We, we aren't advancing anywhere, really. Uh, long respect among Chinese leftists uh, for organizing Chinese workers and students in the diligent work-study program, the Four Elders, um, and students in the uh, of the Kuomintang hold an eclectic view of anarchism and its role within Kuomintang. Li Zishen, uh, one of the elders of the World Society, proposed that the Kuomintang adopt a federation based on Proton's principle. This federation will be a combination of local and central governments with the goal of decentralizing power of regional bodies. However, given the political situation of China, a degree of central authority, military power, finances, and heavy industries will still be in the government hands until anarchism was achieved. The anarchists of the Kuomintang aim to construct a labor university akin to those in Europe where a new kind of labor um, leader and intellectual will be created. Legendary organizers will transform not just a party, but rather the nation. Um, with the help of the newspapers, <clears throat> Um, uh, Revolutionary Weekly, they would propagate anarchist ideals and argue that the three sun's three principles of the people was, by default, a way to create anarchism. In the latest article of Revolutionary Weekly, the fiery elder uh, Wu Zihui denounced Chairman Wang and the RCA for inciting class struggle, arguing that Dr. Sun's revolution called for all of China to rise up, as evidenced by the declaration made in the First Congress in 1924 to Wu. The revolution was Quan Min Gaming, a revolution for all people. However, the RCA members have denounced this terminology on the basis that is used by the counter-revolutionary Chinese Youth Party in the North. To the RCA by using counter-revolutionary language, who ascended the repudiation of social transformation as part of the National Revolution, which is considered ironic for an anarchist. Further criticism has come from Chen Gongbo, who decided to draft an open letter to the Revolutionary Weekly. In his letter, he has argued that the world society seemed to enjoy their official positions as elders within the party and spent most of their, most of their time courting the influential military leaders of the Provisional Action Committee. To Wu and Li Shi Zeng, whom he once may have idolized, he has grown doubt, growing doubts about the commitment to the revolution, especially with regard to the lack of belief in the class struggle. The only solution, according to him, was for them to resign their positions immediately and for the rest of the camp to dismiss their ideals as folly. The elders make fair points. They need to get on with the times. Yeah, we'll do that one more now. Uh, I'm going to request... Uh, what can I... Request forces. I want... Let's go with 30. Why? Because we're going to need at least one person here. Um, to help hold the line just in case. And by the line, I mean the coast. Because I don't trust my allies, and of course we own most of the coast anyway, so... Yeah. It's kind of what we have to do here. Any upgrades? No. You know, we, we press four more divisions maybe from you guys. Or more request. Oh, there you go. You're not with us, Shangxi. No, we can press a few more divisions. There you go. There you go. Go and tr get down there. Hold and go down there. Which helps worsens our line a little bit. But they might have started attacking us too, which might waste some of their strength, which would be nice. You can hold. Well, you actually might be able to do that, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, then. Oh, there's seven divisions there? Jesus Christ, that's a lot. Oh, now, see, now they're attacking the lines, which is not ideal, but... Hopefully we can hold out. That would be nice. For the most part. It's probably going to be a long, drawn-out conflict. the military regions, which is nice. Um, Chinese industrial cooperatives. March of the Red Army. More artillery attack and defense. If a completed legacy of the Mingan insurgency focus, we'll grant a stronger bonus. Restore the Ministry of the Navy. Authorize special services. Foundation of the Air School. What are the... Oh. If we strengthen the look to the West focus, we'll grant a stronger bonus. More entrenchment for our engineers. 
gain a reserve infantry division. Ooh, that's not bad. China's vast land expanse. Among the enemy will most likely attempt to enable invasion in our country rather than direct land invasion. Given the economic and political importance of the coastal regions, we would do well to prepare in advance the enemy's invasion by fortifying and preparing the coast line with bunkers, pillboxes, and other defenses. God, I hope so. Song at midnight. Uh, ooh. Get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. A new film has emerged with Chinese cinemas. This new cinematic masterpiece, which is being declared China's first horror film, is directed by the leftist leaning ma director Ma Zhu Wai Bang. It draws influence from the 1923 American film The Hunchback of Notre Dame and the 1910 French novel Le Fantôme de Opera. Critics of the film have pointed out that the anxious tones of the horror genre seem to emulate the very anxiety the pe Chinese people hold in regard to the ever changing political landscape of the land. Furthermore, the film's leftist and nationalist characters led to the Kuomintang officially endorsing the film. Starring the handsome actor Jin Shan as Song Dan Ping and the beautiful actress Hu Ping as Li Xiaojia, the film is set on a dark and stormy night in 1926. A group of actors arrive at a demolished theater and begin practicing for the show. One night, the uh, play's lead, Sun Xiaoyu, requests to practice parts by himself, but he struggles with the lines. As he continues to rehearse, a mysterious voice suddenly lends its voice to the actor, helping him learn the lines. The actor decides to seek out the benevolent angel and to find that the voice belongs to none other than the famed actor Song Dan Ping, who was thought to have been deceased. In flashbacks, Dang Ping reveals of the prior to acting he has been a revolutionary in the Second Revolution against Yuan Shikai. Out of the revolution's fear, he fled into hiding and fell in love with Li Xiaojia. Dan Ping's rival, Tan Jun, however, has Dan Ping tortured and attacked with acid. Embarrassed and ashamed of his visceral scars, Dan Ping uh, uh, flees into hiding once more, which drives Xiaojia into insanity. He spends his nights in the theater, alone and hidden, comforting a mentally unstable Xiao Xia. Um, in the present day, the actor troupe makes it to their show and presents to none other than, their, other than the, the, the theater's owner, Tang Jun. Uh, Tang takes a liking to Sun's girl, and tries to seize her when Sun fights back in the struggle. Sun's lover dies, but Dan Ping emerges out of hiding to fight Tang Jun. The theater viewers see Dan Ping as a monster due to his disconfigured face and attempts to chase him with torches. The film ends with Dan Ping jumping to his death while Xiao Xia finally regains her uh, sanity. Oh boy. Someone passed me a tissue. Oh god. Uh, how much guns do we have? We have 8,000 Yao, you know, at this point. We need you to be thicker. Where are you at? Oh, no, normal infantry. You know what? Give him a little more staying power that way. Are we going to win everywhere? God, no, of course not. Those are uh, reforms march onwards. Having taken our steps, first steps towards improving the quality of our army, further initiatives soon followed. Localized units have been broken up and redistributed, with some officers outright expelled for corruption. Training similarly has been revamped from the ground up to bring your forces up to speed with modern techniques. There's been plenty of grumbling from the members of the old guard, uh, particularly those who benefit from the regional nature of our old forces, however. This patchwork model, which sometimes is more effective in the early days of the warlord era, have no place in the future of the military. Our armies triumph even off the battlefield. Yeah. Immediately get more defense, which is fantastic. As we lose more convoys, not good. And not bad. I'd like to go there, so... Boom. More soft attack, slightly more soft attack, and then we need more army reform, too. What do we got? Military reforms in progress, that's good. We're doing better, overall. And they're actually attacking us down here in well, is Korea, too. Hey, not bad. Keep giving us that army XP, y'all. We're losing here, that's not good. Up there. Just please don't need to invade us. Oh god, dang it. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, we lost. Um, I think you pooped out right now. That's why I was making the cavalry already. Is this Zeely Click Officer? Um, that's not bad. Oh, this is really bad. Actually, you go in here. He's been wounded, that sucks. Okay, they're just toying with us now at this point. Get in there too. Well, that's not good. That's really bad, actually. If you can move fast enough, you're gonna circle and kill them off. Do you have any? Imp 
three skills, capture ratio, eh. Be offensive, you get more attack leads that way. No, you gotta help, help hold him out. Come on. Oh, what the? Okay, they just keep destroying our divisions. This is not good. Hello? Take the frickin' tiles. Are you stupid? Apparently. Wait, what? Burma's gone? Oh, that's not good. Yeah, we're down here on this front too, which is not good. But they're also fighting the Barati commune. So for the most part, we're doing okay. Good. It's a little out of town, but it's alright. Well, at least we got that port back. Um, William. Oh, hey, it's William Foster one. Oh, nice. All right, let me go here too. Then it's fine. Oh, come on. What is this? Oh, we lost that small navy we had. Whatever. Um, we're gonna wait till we get to army reform. As long as we're mostly holding out, that's the most important thing here. Can you actually win there? You might be able to, actually. Maybe not. Okay, then. Oh, they're forcing the attack, too. Oh, wow. Any upgrades? Charismatic? Sure, yeah. You're gonna be charismatic. By God, you're gonna be charismatic no matter what. Beat the crap out of them, yeah. More army reform? Yes, please. Let's just take 200 days. My God. Hey, fortify. It would be nice if we did it earlier. Dang it. Um, I did do that one last time. This wouldn't be too bad. Foreign ships. Modern Chinese soldier. Blueprints are all right. Recon breakthrough. More artillery attack and defense. The soul of one pole would be nice. Hmm. Salvage buying fleet. Get near able command. Nice squad, but his more military factions wouldn't be bad. What are we missing here? We're missing a lot of trucks and artillery, which doesn't surprise me. National reconstruction. More construction, more construction, more construction. Develop heavy industry. Secure foreign. Ooh, that wouldn't be bad either. Ooh, that'd be good for reliability, stability, war support. Nutrition Dongguo. Following the collapse of the NRA in the first northern expedition, few dared to dream that the flag of the white sun, blue sky, and holy red earth would fly over Beijing. Despite the completion of the second northern expedition, there are still some of those who threaten the success of the revolution. As we end the military phase of the revolution, we must work together in this next phase of geopolitical uh, tutelage to safeguard our goals. Yeah. Because why not? Oh, actually, you might be able to beat these guys up here. You're going to hold out. You actually go right here. How can you not win there? How can you not win? Four divisions? My god, come on. Let's do better, y'all. Shall we? Give those guys in place. Hold them in place, hold them in place, hold them in place. There you go. Surprised they're not attacking down here. Can we do anything here? You might actually be able to take Port Arthur, maybe. Why are you attacking here? Hello? We can organize ourselves. Oh my god, this is terrible. Move! Oh my god, why are you not moving? Hey, this, that's good. Come on, let's not be dumb here. You're not moving. You are absolutely not moving. And these guys got encircled. Are you kidding me? Get your butts in there. Hello? Uh, there's nowhere for us to move except there, maybe? Alright, at this point, I need to deploy the next group here, too. If I get right there. You go right here.
Oh, and I knew this would be pretty tough. Still, god dang it. Just kill that division off if you can for more moral support. Come on, and hopefully we got him. Up here we are no, not doing great. Oh. Hello. Oh. Yeah. It's not terrible. It could be better though. Oh, looks like we lost here, huh? But they have only two divisions left, so. It's not god awful. Oh, they have three divisions now. Two divisions? Yeah, they're not going to do win here. But we got rid of another divi enemy division. That's pretty nice. What happened here? You look away for a second, and then. Oh, this crap happens. Lost even more divisions because we were distracted up here and up here. Oh my god. Ah, oh, never fight a land war in Asia. Do that one if we really wanted to, but happy 1940, everybody. My god, is it a mess? These guys are not strong enough. Very least, 10 combo with at the very least. Oh, it might be a bit too late for them. No, any more guns, too. Can I buy any more guns from anybody? We have no convoys, no. Hey, that's good though. Ah, uh, let's see, nineteen forty. We'll grab this. For the most part, we're doing okay. We've lost 150,000. Not good. We've got plenty enough manpower, though. Same collaboration. We've actually killed up quite a few of the Japanese, but they've also lost lots of the Bharati economy, which is, thank God, they're war with them, too. Thank God they're holding out here as well. Because this is a little terrifying down here. Oh, they've actually abandoned their posts? Good. Secure foreign recognition. As few would have disputed the legitimacy at this point with the capture of Beijing, it's imperative that we reach out to the Western nations, especially the French and the Third International. To receive recognition as the sole Republic of China. Well, we are still waging an offensive with the, to win the hearts and minds of the Chinese people. We must also seek to establish our international reputation. That'd be fantastic. Hmm. That tower would be good to get. Need you to hold here. Take every single tower you possibly can. No. We can't we can't lose this section here. Dragon boats in nationalist China. The socialist riders and uh, affiliated to this LCS. Oh god dang it, come on. Uh, the Marxist Guo Moru has recently completed his play Q Yuan, based on the famous uh, poet Q Yuan, a patriotic poet and politician from the state of Chu during the Warring States period. The play is likened the traditional Chinese literary hero to a people's poet, and one of the first socialist revolutionaries in Chinese history. With comparisons made to Hamlet and King Lear, the play has exemplified Ku's social idealism and his great patriotism as a model for all the Chinese that follow in this era of national revolution. According to the legends, Q Yuan had served as a state of Chu, but has been exiled numerous times by his jealous rivals in the Chu court, and thus spent his time in exile collecting legends and rearranging folk olds. In addition, he has also spent his time writing great poetry and writing profoundly in the nature of the Chinese state. His anxiety, however, bring him to an increasingly troubled state of health, and is reported to have taken walks to view his emaciated face in the reflection of a well. In roughly 278 BCE, after his country capital, the city of Yang fell to the fearsome general Bai Qi of the state of Qin. Q Huan wrote a deep lament for the collapse of his state. He then ended his life by wading to the Milo River while carrying a stone, perhaps out of sheer patriotism. A popular legend emerged. The villagers uh, had attempted to sail out into the lake with dumplings in their boats to save Q Yuan, but were unable to do so. In their desperation, they beat drums and splashed water with the paddles to keep fish and evil spirits from eating his body. They also threw rice in the river to distract the fish, but one night, the spirit of Q Yuan appeared to his friends and told him that he had long passed, and that they should wrap the rice in silk packages to ward off the dragons that would consume them. These food packages became the famous Zongzi, and the racing of boats to find Q's body had become the cornerstones of the dragon boat tradition. 
Woes, more whose play has become a resounding success in the Chinese leftist literary world, and the national government has been quick to capitalize on success by declaring that Q was one of the China's first great revolutionaries. While some socialists denounce the Dragon Ball festivals as pure superstitions, most writers do agree that Q was the true leader of the People's Revolution. As fidelity to some country, his dedication to the people, and his work of art shall forever be immortalized for generations to come. Let's have some Zongzi for lunch. This is terrible. This is god awful. We can't afford to lose anything here. Come on. Do better. I need you to hold out there. I need you to keep doing what you're doing there and help just, like, watch it. And we get encircled again. Come on. Do not let them get any more organization. Oh, you let them get another port? Are you kidding me? Come on. You guys have got Port Arthur, but we still need to defend this too. That's good. But we need more than just that. Um, 1940. Coordination's not bad to have. Research bonus is fine. We need you to kill these guys off right now. There's literally no time to wait. No, you have to kill them off right now. You're going to force the attack and die if you have to. I don't care. This is very bad. I mean, there's nowhere else we can really fight on the front. We do need more guns and whatnot. Um, lessons of war, diversify elite forces. We could go to war economy if we really need to. Political advisors. I um, guess technically we still need a... Uh, Anyone else here? Fort, land fort effectiveness. Coastal fort effectiveness. Artillery. Supply consumption is not really worth it right now. It's alright. It's nothing to write home about, though. Theorists. Eh. Political advisors. Shadowy Lauban. I get more two operative slots. That's pretty good. Or we can increase this as well. I think I'm gonna go with the Shadowy Lao Bang guy. Where is he? Yeah. He's how I've been. How much more do you actually have? Crap ton of manpower, but no guns and artillery equipment. Which makes sense. God, I hate the Japanese. We're gonna get a volunteer. Ooh, that's good too. I like that. Wait, why are you attacking? You hold. You know where we can exploit there. They're not invading the south for now. The north is falling apart, which is god awful. We're calling the Philippines, which is fine, whatever. Because right now we just need time to get more guns and artillery. I'd love to attack here, but we just don't have the resources for that. Oh my god. It's just a ticking time bomb for these. The lab uh, labor of hound and horse. Dai Chung Feng was raised by a single mother, a woman who instilled in him a ceaseless drive for power, but also a certain sense of Confucian and uh, filial piety, a loyalty that seemed to carry over to the masters he latches onto. As this one very might well be a ticket to the very heights of power in China. Dai sees the relationship to Hu Zhang Nam as akin to ones found in the ancient classics, conducting the labor of hound and horse, a reference to Liu Bei and Zhu Liang, but other loyalty for General Hu. Like the noble heroes of old, Dai's fealty to who begets his own expectations of nigh feudal obligation from his own subordinates, and also his expectations of requited, requited honor from his master. On a personal level, Dai lives alone with his guards and his servant, Jia Jinin, moving frequently between various safe houses and residences to, so no one knows quite where he is. His leadership is personal, stressing almost exaggeratedly, exaggeratedly military discipline relying on his near-bounced energy, his high attention to detail and calculating mind. He prefers to use his own prodigious Memory over modern filing systems and works sometimes days on him. On the other hand, he's also said to be erratic and paranoid at times and a heavy drinker. Hey. 
Unwilling to delegate out tasks to his warring lieutenants and clashing with his other deputies for his talk of humility and submission, he is not afraid to spare the word of his brutality, creating a very public image of a monster ruthlessly carrying out his master's tasks. There are very few willing to cross the uh, Lao Ban, and Hu Zong Nan has very found, found a very useful companion in him. A faceless fellow, a dangerous mind. Prepare for the long war. Partial. Oh, we go straight to war economy. Take this focus, we'll make the decisions to relocate military industries and relocate civ civilian industries cheaper. Oh, that's pretty good. Daily political power. Oh, that's good. Weekly war support. Oh, we could use that. The fate of our fellow Republicans, a third repatriated Congress, prepare and stay behind cells. War of resistance. Uh, preparing a long war. It will not come easy. The enemy will push into our seas, ravage our coasts, and torment our long divided nation. At times, we will be forced to fall back and perhaps even towards the interior of the country. But we will never surrender our civilization away. The war will be long, but our determination to win shall last even longer, and we will accept nothing less than absolute victory. Uh, harness the people's will? Let's, uh, let's do this one. Stay, prepare, stay behind cells. Behind every blade of grass lies a Chinese peasant who is willing to carry his dadao and drop it away to warn his enemy. Even if we are forced to withdraw in the face of an overwhelming enemy, our partisans and bands will work havoc behind enemy lines through sabotage and skirmishes. For every inch of soil we lose to the enemy, we'll bite back. <clears throat> Legacy of Mingal Insurgency, huh? Legacy? Well, we didn't do that one. Oh, we just want to do the modern NRA, too. That would actually help us out probably quite a bit. Tiny Army Centralization. Uh, in the insurgency period, command and control was utter mess, left to the poorly coordinate initiative of various militia commanders. As a matter of work in invading league patrols, where competent Jones were often purged, and elite German trained units held in Nanjing to keep the Sun uh, Chuang Feng in power, but a real staff officer system must be created if we are to fight against determined foes. Forced concentration. If we are to avoid stalemates in the grinding sort of conflict that we can ill afford, we must take inspiration from the lessons learned in the trenches of the last major war. After careful scouting and planning, weak points in the enemy lines must be assailed in one creative focus attack using modern combined arms. The widening breach will allow for breakthroughs to win us the day. Study European air tactics. A critical uh, air uh, force multiplier that has been increasingly refined in Europe is the development of modern air arms. Initially used as a means of reconnaissance, as applications have multiplied across the last few decades, even warlords have been buying planes. Andre Malraux has gathered foreign volunteer pilots to serve as we train Chinese ground crews, but one day we'll claim the skies for our own. And eventually we'll do the modern NRA. The modern NRA is one built along European lines, one that integrates artillery, armor, and aircraft with advanced communications and dedicated logistics. It's the vanguard of a new China, a revolutionary force that was meant to be since Wang Po first opened. It's a legacy of countless martyrs whose blood will ensure that China will be soon be able to stand toe to toe with European imperialists. Yeah, we're struggling here. I might have to replay this. I probably will have to replay this because we can't deal with this. Oh, they're, they're bleeding over into here. Like, guys. Well, at least you got there, but still. Up in the north is fine. Ish. Secure foreign recognition is pretty good. That's not bad. Well, we need more artillery attack and defense as well. Um, wait, how would you... Okay, a decent amount of political power. The March of Manchuria, lessons of war. First of all, elite focuses. Build out a Chinese defense industry. I mean, yeah, we could. Out of factions of the revolution. Well, 99% is pretty good as well. Anything else around here? Anything for Navy? I do want to... Well, we don't need to go to partial mobile yet. I just want to consolidate guns and whatnot. Hey, we're actually winning a battle here? That's weird. Because we'll have to redeploy more horses here too, aren't we? We probably will. And once they spread themselves out too thin, we can encircle them and destroy them. Please, you cannot lose over here. Anarchism in the party state. And they are continuing to fight for control over the syndicalist movement in China. The four elders have sought to rope in anarchist thinking and intellectuals into the movement. <clears throat> Former anarchists themselves and the primary patrons of the free world or world society, they joined the Kuomintang in the twenties to scorn to the scorn of many true believers. Wu Zihui have vocally defended their decision the most. He has argued that the Kuomintang, the world society, and the anarchists have a common enemy in the warlordism, and like Krokopin's support for the Great War, it is sometimes necessary for anarchists to support aligned causes. How moreover, with the Kuomintang's return to China, he has argued that the party has meaningfully changed since nineteen twenty seven, now truly committed to revolution, and should even if a fa fall, it can always be brought back to the right path if enough anarchists join. Not everyone's convinced though. <clears throat> Mao Yibo, for example, is accused of Kuomintang for being corrupt and serving the interests of militarists and job seekers. Zhen Zhongju, an anarcho syndicalist from Xinjiang who has worked for the party briefly but has since grown estranged, he has reiterated many of the concerns expressed in 1924 in the Free People's Journal. To him, <clears throat> a common enemy argument could be used to rectify or justify any alliance and he denounced the idea that anarchists are the knight errant of the classics, required to help everyone who asks. Instead, the modern anarchists must abide by the principles and keep in mind what happens next. It's fairly cast to give the four elders support of tutelage, democracy, and dictatorship of the proletariat, all of which retains government and private property. What would follow such a plan to anarchism, which is neither would be no different than going south in order to go north? Still, Xi and others have some history of cooperating with the Kuomintang, but as the party has grown increasingly authoritarian, <clears throat> it will require far more than flowery discourse to truly sweet hearts. 
foul elder shepherd movement. Anarchists remain suspicious. Yeah, they do. I mean, I guess I could always ask for more forces, but still. Do you control state? Request material support. Request forces. Yeah, they don't even have that for this one. We're pulling you off the front line here. Hopefully they attack us more. Oh! Bruh. So we do that, they immediately start attacking us. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, or in Western Europe. I thought I would already... I had the second Valkyrie going on. Oh, I guess I was wrong. Costa Rica's gone. Nice. I think he's going to do this too. Nice. Recon companies. Um, we're doing okay here as well. 1940s or 1941 already. Yeah, grab some infantry stuff. Hey, look at that. I need you to work here right now, please. Thank you. Get there too. Yeah, south. Don't look at the south. The north. We're holding. I'm glad we got told that Shang Chi will be attacked soon. At least that's nice. Um, can I request forces from you guys? No. So Juan. Well, can I ask for forces here? No, they're not a puppet. Hunan. Oh, I'm just going to tell you to do this. Just hold up here. If you possibly can. Denmark's joined the Reich's Pact. Well, they were war now. Then. Why can the International give us support earlier? <clears throat> Hello, are you going to win here or what? There's two old divisions I need to die, so. And you should be able to take these guys out. I mean, I'm not going to lie. You guys should be able to take them out. Mulan Kong Jun. Today I saw the premiere <clears> of <throat> uh, the first feature films created under uh, Kuomanting Rule. Directed by Bu Wang Kang and with Yang Chen Yong Chang playing the lead, Mulan Kong Jun. Mulan joins the army as a historical period drama based on the legend of Hua Mulan. And show of filial piety, she joins the army in her father's place, disguising herself as a man, and courageously helps fight off invading barbarian nomads. Throughout, she de demonstrates her heroism, courage, and humility. Hailing traditional virtues of honor and valor, the film was an immediate success and raised patriotic feelings throughout the nation. It has broken records for how long it was in the theaters and caused an inevitable flood of companions to the current Chinese situation. But the nation is still reeling from years of foreign violations of sovereignty. Other themes of feminism and duty have also proven popular, <clears throat> and spawned continuing discussion about the role women should play in changing Chinese society. A fascinating film. You are going to win here. Do not lose Nanjing. If you lose Nanjing, I will forever be disappointed. I'm going to replay this off screen, which is going to disappoint me. Whatever. Come on, attack us again up there. Because we know for a fact we cannot assault these positions here, can we? Or maybe we can. Nice. Well, we actually are pushing in. Look at that. Well, this is a huge problem. And you guys are going to go in there, and hopefully you can take all the supply issues. At least you got that thing done, taken care of. That's nice. And you immediately get attacked. Russia invade the Reichspact. Good for you. How's the Dutch East Indies looking? Well, they're alive for now. Good. Let him attack us. Moscow Accord. Oh, that's nice. Um, You know, you might actually be able to win here, too. Maybe. Hopefully. Oh, what else we got? Lessons of War. Guns looking better. That's very good. They're both leaving this tile. Interesting. Go. Here comes the Philippine divisions. I'd love to encircle them, but I just don't think we can right now. Something here, maybe? Hot off the presses. Within the party, one of the most common means for interfactional bickering comes in newspapers and pamphlets from the respective cliques to demonstrate their supposedly better understanding of Chinese society and history. One of the most popular newspapers read by party members of Cheng Gongbu's Bo's, the revolutionary critic, uh, Gung Mengu's Advance and Sun Fo's Reconstruction Review. What well, Cheng Gong Bo's revolutionary critic features a collaboration of writers within the RCA's most radical wings, including Shi Kuntong, 
uh, Guo Chuntao, and Zhu Tehang. The writings mainly deal with the desire to see the party reorganized and restructured once more. Uh, more complete reorganization than the 1924 party reshuffle, to them. The revolution must be led by cadre of revolutionary intellectuals, and the masses must be drawn as they are the true vanguard of the national revolution. <clears throat> The critics' writings deal with mostly scientific and Marxist terms, with the writers like Chen frequently using words such as materialism to dictate their thought processes. Gu Mengyu's advance shows that Gu and his followers were well read on Marxism, but they rejected the notion that Marxism was scientific or historical, and instead they call for a similar reorganization expressed by Chen and his followers, but with less radical means. To Gu, there's no need for a class base of the party, as Chinese society has not yet developed into a class society. Instead, the KMT should represent all oppressed peoples. Sung Fo's Reconstruction Review differed in the reorganizationists in that the writings or writers of the review argue that the KMT should not be reorganized but rather reconstructed. To these writers, the KMT has been tainted since the United Front, and the RCA radicals merely echoed the tenets of Marxism rather than adhering to the orthodox theory of Sun Yat sen. Furthermore, they also disagreed with the PAC, seeing PAC's populism and the PAC's flexibility and working with the syndicalists as a potential threat to the National Revolution's success. Hmm, radical socialism. Well, we gotta do this one since it doesn't decrease radicalism. At this point, I might actually start converting a couple divisions here to our normal infantry division, community zone. Because uh, we could probably use that because Nanjing is about to get surrounded. Um, yeah, they've fully committed to destroying us. You know, but then their folly we might have some opportunities here too. Uh, do we need 100? No. We're just gonna go straight to this one. More defense. Immediately more defense, please. <clears throat> and now Jing's a frontline city with no defense around it. Yeah. God, this sucks. Pyongyang would be great to get, though. Beat up some Japanese divisions, yeah. Doing okay there. Um, They're busy over there. We probably can't take anything over there. Over here, our allies are trying desperately to do stuff. And there we go. Any hope we are now dashed. Woohoo, huh? Yeah, I know you're doing that. Oh, of course. Up, destroy them if you can. We lost another division, which sucks. Poop them out. Improved competing machine. Um, if we help out right now, can they just walk in our territory? If they can, I'll go join the war. If they cannot, we're not joining the war. Which I think they should be just be able to walk in anyways, but whatever. So we do well here, yeah, yes, yes. There, look at this. We're gonna have support the attack, support the attack. This looks bad, but it could be a lot worse up there. And this looks god awful too, but still. Get to your spots, god dang it. Shore it up. Mm hmm. Xinhua would help disrupt supply lines, but we were so freaking close, god dang it. You go here. Come on, yes, good. Clear one who none, that's fine. You go here, you go do that, you do that. You go right there. Well, we're slowly but surely getting there. In the meantime, we're gonna go. We can't drop anything there. Well, you go put some guys here, why not? Well, look at that. That'd be a good defensive position, wouldn't it? Uh, force concentration. I do want to come back over here and grab, prepare for the long war, because we'll definitely need that too. What else we got? Lessons of War. Chinese Unification, we're going to wait for that thing. Uh, we'll get that one later on. Yeah. Nope. Oh my god, they landed up here too. Come on. Force Defense. Six divisions, holy crap, that's a lot. <clears throat> oh, did they push in through here a little bit too? That's not good. Uh, is there anywhere we can exploit here? Uh, yes, actually there is. Help support, help support, go in. Good. Slowly getting to the points where we can actually do okay-ish here and there. 
I'm gonna hold immediately. They're using that tile to in infiltrate. Are you kidding me, bro? I mean, that's smart for them to do, but still. Another Japanese Marine Division, yes. Kill them off, yes. We're doing alright here. Still doing okay here ish. Help them out. Because they're running out of equipment, it looks like two, which is good. You're gonna leave the charge into here, maybe, if you can. Yes, no, maybe so, yes. Oh, hello, Eastern Seas War. Uh, okay. Oh, that's not okay. Let's take out the Germany's Indies, and that's another front we've got to protect then. Germany's Indies, you better hold out. My god. Come on, destroy him there. Vilnius Uprising, very cool. Keep these guys in place. Philippines are at War 2. Netherlands have joined the Reich's Pact, and cut them off there. Very nice. Very good. Do not lose Nanjing. Please, for the love of God, do not lose Nanjing. Please do not lose our other regions too. That'd be really bad. We're doing okay there. Up here, we're doing alright. God. Don't lose, don't lose, don't lose. Get that soldier in there. God dang it, you piece of crap. Ugh. Just just win. Just win a battle or two. That's all we need. A battle or two. Not much. Kill them off. Come on. Oh, what else we got going on? Let's see. We got that. Prepare for the long war, which we already are. Is there any way I can spill my political power? Industrial concerns? Eh, sure, why not? 10% is not bad. Oh, we can't do zoo. Redistribute warlord assets, huh? Radar stations, and refineries, infrastructure, railways. No. Industrial research speed, the synthetics. Yeah, I'll do that one, why not? Yeah, we, need more guns. we need way more of everything here. Seems about right. Alright, so that's the case. We gotta start attacking here, too. Probably. Help them out slight bit. We should be able to win here. Even though they have a Japanese Mountaineer, Mountaineer Division. Uh, they have divisions help supporting, so you should be able to do that. Going all the way to here wouldn't really help out because. Uh, actually, they don't have a port up there. That's actually really interesting, huh? Two divisions there, huh? Not bad. And where else we can attack? Maybe. Maybe a good defensive position, perhaps? Especially when there's a river around here? Yeah? Oh, this is bad. Oh, the dude. Oh, shh, Nikes. You win there. No? Okay. Didn't think so. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's really bad. But this is very good. You're gonna sneak in there. You are gonna go bust right here. There you go. That's using your head. Spence, I don't care what happens. We're holding on as best we can. AI needs to realize that they need to move in when they can. The Japanese are slowly expanding quite a bit and maybe perhaps a bit too much. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be bad to get in there if you could. But then again, they still have another port right there too, so. The north looks like the best option for movement. Uh, Shang-Chi dying? Not so. Well, if anything, they've actually moved in. Oh. That's good, but you don't have anyone else supporting you here. 1941, 1940. Yeah, get some anti-tank, maybe. Maybe some better planes. Oh, hello. Yeah, we're doing better, though, overall. Which is good. Come on, guys. Do not let them have an out. You can win there, definitely. Which would be great. It's looking better down now, down over here, because they're probably not supporting their armies much, but that's alright. I need you to make sure they don't get any more organization, so if you die, you die. Follow Vilnius, yes. Another encirclement, yes. You're going to attack until they literally die, and you're going to do the same, because I don't care. Because the north is looking pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. It looks pretty darn bad. You actually cut off a division, which is pretty darn good, but still. 
the rest of it's looking good. It's just a lot of micromanagement, which is like basically Hoi 4 in a, gen in a nutshell. Good little defensive position, nice. Slow again, there how much uh, army, uh, army speed is okay, it's not great. Guys, kill them off until you literally die. I don't understand how you can like not win here. Them being able to march out of the legation cities is god awful for us. There you go, come on. Come on, it's only two divisions. Oh my god, you fought for nothing. You let all those thousands of soldiers die for nothing. Oh god, playing China is rough. It is so rough playing as China. Let's see. You had the opportunity, but you lost. Well, go this way, you sting dong. We haven't lost Nanjing yet. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the north still looks like the best options for us. Oh. Preparing for the long war is good. Prepare the behind, stay behind cells. Yes, please. <clears throat> If they want to attack us, that's fine with me. Two divisions here. Well, we don't have a lot of supply. It's alright, though. We can beat the crap out of them here, too. God dang it. How, how, why do they get more strength? Come on. If you take that, they're not going to have any strength left. Failure of the Halifax Conference, that's pretty normal. Um, then, sorry for supplies first. And anything else we got here? Yeah, our factions, 100% it's looking pretty decent. Could get more war support that way, but we don't really need more war support, do we? This is looking actually better than I thought it would. And we're going to go this way. Do you beat the crap out of them. Um, supply is going to start looking pretty bad up here, though. So we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Maybe. better. Well, they're not moving down there. They're just not moving up here, too. You have no organization, which doesn't surprise me. The Green Quagmire. Grains are a staple food, the lifeblood of a Chinese people, so discussions on grain and taxation are always a headache, subject to landlords' interests and peasant unrest. The government's stake in the matter is ensuring that yields are sufficient to feed the nation, to adequately and hopefully fairly. Tax is a major component in the national economy and also store grain to feed the destitute and also prepare for famines. But the landlords are either brought to heel or expropriated. Well, the parties stress that they are different from the greedy warlords that came before them. But some have soured due to the disparities in the new government's promises compared to the realities on the ground. Much of the grain supposed to be in the going to the public granaries have been stolen by corrupt bureaucrats and taxation has been uneven at best. Many farmers have refused to contribute, accusing our magistrates of being thieves. It's very difficult without good documentation to tax the farmers, and this type of bureaucratic infrastructure simply does not exist yet. <laughs> Alternatives have been proposed, including taxing grain yields directly and eliminating other farm taxes altogether. Given how little is collected in practice, this will help increase the government revenues, but it's bound to be unpopular with the peasants. But with wars and uh, the debts that accompany them accruing, it's a tempting proposition. Perhaps one day industry and commerce will take the place of primary economic sectors. But for now, it seems the earth provides life to the state as well. Tax grain directly for the war effort. Audit, order audits, and the grain is filled. Streamline taxation and lower it. You can use more stability, but... Well, political power is not bad. More totalism. I, I'm really still going for that one. Uh, the soul of one pole would be nice. So we're going to do this one as well. These days, political power and weekly war support for a year. Uh, fate of our fellow Republicans. Hmm. That would be bad for more stability. We still read that one last time. As their experiences in the Min Gang Zong show, the National Revolution is not just a struggle of the Chinese people against imperialists, but it's also a social revolution. A revolution to uphold the centuries of oppression and bring forth a new era of equality as such will encourage our country's women to take part in the revolution and to fight for a new world for themselves. Uh, let's see, Chinese industrial cooperatives, the Gong He program, work together, seeks to organize grassroots military and civilian industrial development with the creation of self-supporting cooperatives, mainly in the rural areas, to create unemployment for workers and refugees. Not only will this program benefit us economically, but also provide the workers a chance to organize and utilize their democratic rights. March of the Red Army. 
Uh, for the first time in Chinese history, a nationalist and revolutionary army determined to liberate the Chinese people has succeeded in bringing about the unification of the Chinese country. Heroically, we fight as we march to the sun of the world revolution. We'll continue on under the banner of Dr. Sun Yat-sen, with the comrades side by side, bringing about the total liberation of all oppressed peoples, and then a modern Chinese soldier. The warlord's armies were infamous worldwide for their apparent incompetence and lack of modern equipment. As part of our doctor, late Dr. Sun Yat-sen's plan to create a modern army, we take pride in our efforts to modernize the image of the Chinese soldier. Equipped with the latest rifles and imbued with the spirit of revolution, the rifleman of the NRA stands above all else in the soul of Wampoa. Oh, uh, let's see. The Wampoa Military Academy is more than a mere military school. <clears throat> Its mythos stems from the revolutionary spirit that floods its dorms and rooms. Wampo is a bulwark of national revolution, a source of strength for all Chinese to look up to. Despite hundreds of alumni becoming martyrs in the revolution, um, the future is bright for the next generation of Wampo, the very soul of the national revolution. Reinforce the rear guard. Ooh, that would have been bad too, but uh, I think we'll end it there for today. Because we're struggling here, but we're going to do a lot of this off screen too. Uh, we could also do this one too, why not? Um, too long have the masses in China have been oppressed by the corrupt and brutal warlords that have divided our great country. With the recent victory over the several of these warlords, we may now have access to this asset and property, which may see fit to return to the people or to utilize them for the sake and purposes of the national revolution. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to struggle and hopefully do even better against uh, the Fangshan government. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.